So, my name's Janine Njai David. I'm a biracial daughter to parents who are there and there, who married across ethnicity and socioeconomic status. They were trailbla trailblazers then and they're trailblazers now. I'm granddaughter to an immigrant Gambian stowaway, Dudu, as I used to call him, and mother to an Indian American British Amer <laughs> British Indian four-year-old daughter, Odetta. <laughs> She's got quite the, uh, quite the title there. Um, I'm, really ex I'm extremely proud to have you here with me today, Mum and Dad, um, having flown in from the UK last night, and they are extremely jet-lagged. <laughs> um, so my work has traversed global to local, as Jasmine said, but whether through my role at Plan International, where I work to advance the rights and equality for girls around the world, or Spark, which was a mentoring uh, organization for underserved middle school, school students, the thread throughout has always been the same. How can I improve the lives of those who are most overlooked? Now remember that as it will be relevant later. Those who are most overlooked. Now, during my graduate studies at UCLA, I met development economist Dr. Manisha Shah. And five years later, we, together we co-founded the Global Lab for Research in Action. We study together uh, critical social justice issues faced by hard to reach populations worldwide. We then translate the findings into more digestible formats like op-eds, like policy briefs. And then just like the name here, we amplify the findings and insights through podcasts, through interviews and social media to deepen public understanding, yes, but also to promote evidence-based policy. So back to why I'm here today. I'm here to talk about, to you about a national public social awareness campaign that we, the Global Lab, announced just last week on June 2nd for International Sex Workers Day. The purpose of the Red Umbrella Campaign, as we named it, is to make sex work safer. But before I dive into the campaign itself, I'd like to provide a little bit of context. Now, I'm sure you'd all agree, everyone deserves to be safe at work, including sex workers. It's thought that there are more sex workers in the United States than female cashiers. While hard to estimate, we believe 1 million sex workers in comparison to 720,000 cashiers. Now, sex work includes the entire field of sexual services, including exotic dancing, escort services, web-based work, and prostitution. But sex, work, sex workers are also mothers. They're students. They're our neighbors, colleagues, and friends, but I often not thought of as so. Now, when I talk about sex work today, it's really, really important to acknowledge that sex work involves the exchange of sexual services for money or goods between two mutually consenting adults. Sex work is often incorrectly conflated with human trafficking, which involves threat, force, abduction, deception, and other forms of co coercion. Critically, in those cases, there is no mutual consent between the trafficker and the trafficked party. Human trafficking is a violation of human rights. Sex work, however, is a non-coercive transaction between consenting adults. Now, sex work tends to be a taboo subject, despite being one of the oldest professions in the world. And public understanding is understandably limited. But we shouldn't allow our lack of understanding, and quite frankly, our discomfort, prevent us from tackling really challenging issues. It's also heavily stigmatized, which causes much harm to the individuals who participate in sex work. Now, when we talk about safety, we often think about physical safety, but safety comes in many other forms. Safety from violence, yes, but what about protection from being evicted from your home? What about access to healthcare? What about comfort in knowing you can tell your, your family and your friends where you work? And in the United States, the majority of individuals who find themselves caught up in the criminal justice system due to the criminalization of this work are black and brown low-income women. So back to our campaign. 
For all these reasons, the Global Lab at UCLA is leading a national social awareness campaign to educate the public on what prevents sex workers from being safe in their workplace. This campaign has two components, and I want to explain a little bit about these components and their purpose. First, we'll be addressing the stigma I described associated with sex work. Now, how will we do that? We'll be elevating the voices and the narratives of those with lived experience to humanize the individuals who participate in sex work, to share their rich identities that go far beyond their job. Secondly, and this is where the Global Lab comes in, we'll promote policy solutions for advancing safer sex work using rigorous data. And we're fortunate that my co-founder, Dr. Manisha Shah, just so happens to be one of the leading global researchers on sex work. Earlier on, we talked about global to local. We're taking global research and bringing it local. And why these two components? We all know that policy change is hard. We need to change hearts and minds. Hearts through storytelling and minds through data. It's really challenging to advance policy solutions when it's just so much stigma. So in order to change the narrative about sex work, we'll be interviewing sex workers themselves to ask them what would make their lives safer. We'll be raising their voices through what we call the I wish element of the Red Umbrella campaign. Their narratives will help us all better understand what prevents sex workers from being safe in all its form. Their quotes, though, that we provide and we amplify will provide insight into their personal identities to challenge the stigmatization that sex workers face. And amongst all that storytelling, we'll be using data visualizations to help the public understand why they too should care about this issue. And we'll be sharing our research too. So as I shared, the Red Umbrella campaign was actually announced just last week on social media June 2nd for International Sex Workers Day to demonstrate our commitment to this work and really to open the dialogue and the invitation for others to join us. So this was phase one. We're entering phase two this summer. And this is when we are going to be busy proactively reaching out to others and other organizations to join us. And then phase three is our, what we call our full launch, which will culminate on December 17th, which is International Day to End Violence Against Sex Workers. Our launch will consist of a national press release, a social media launch, press interviews and more. Through social media and our dedicated website that we've already created, we'll be uplifting anonymous personal narratives and perspectives while informing, educating, and sharing research insights and policy recommendations. And we'll be inviting the public to show their solidarity by using social media filters and resharing our content. We'll also be identifying outspoken advocates. We need them to help us share our content, to destigmatize sex work, to use their voice and their platforms and really amplify the Red Umbrella campaign to shift this dialogue and really to reduce stigma. So who do I mean when I say we'll be inviting others to join us? Now, this is where I share a little bit about the Global Lab. We're an interdisciplinary hub. We're a bridge between researchers, practitioners, policymakers, but the general public too. Now, while sex workers and sex work organizations have been advocating for safer sex work for decades, the Global Lab at UCLA is in a unique position. We're a UCLA research institute. We can amplify voices, stories, and realities of those with lived experience, but we can also share a body of credible data from around the world that helps direct us to clear solutions to advance safer sex work. This advocacy work, it's not new, but what is new is our intention to broaden the conversation. So an important aspect of this strategy is expanding the breadth of participating organizations. And this takes a lot of legwork. Leg we're delighted that we're already partnered with some national and local organizations and allies, including Decriminalized Sex Work, Old Pros, the Woodwell Freedom Foundation. We've also been uh, very fortunate that Savannah Sly, who joined our board, she's been giving us um, some great counsel on the campaign. And she is an individual with lived 
um, experience. We're also in conversations already, which is pretty exciting, with a broader range of uh, ally organizations, including ACLU, Planned Parenthood, and Human Rights Watch. And you might wonder um, how niche this topic is, and I'm not going to ask you to read this list, but you'll see it's not a niche topic at all. When we think about sex work, it's relevant to disability rights, harm reduction, housing, homelessness, immigration rights, labor rights, LGBTQ plus rights. I mean, the list goes on. And this is our form asking others to get uh, um, other organizations to get involved. So you might ask yourself, why should I care about this? So while our campaign is very much a public facing campaign to change hearts and minds, ultimately our goal, but don't tell anyone, is to expand access to safety for sex workers in the United States by taking active steps to ask policymakers to make sex work safer through the decriminalization of sex work. Decades of research, which we have from around the world, shows that the criminalization of sex work is actually what makes the work fundamentally unsafe. And it impacts the wider community too. Furthermore, while there is much appetite for decriminalizing sex work across the country, in fact, 52% of American voters strongly or somewhat support the decriminalization of sex, we here in the United States still criminalize it. In fact, just a, a few months ago, um, here in the North Hollywood Strip Club, dancers presented petitions to the owners of the club, demanding them to end firings and bad club policies that put their safety at risk. So this really impacts us locally too. So just to recap, today I provided you with a little bit of context. There are two components of the Red Umbrella campaign. We're changing hearts and minds through storytelling and data. We're launching a public awareness campaign. So this is a social media um, filter that we've designed. And we're using changing hearts and minds through storytelling and data. And I've explained our three phases. Our recent announcement on June 2nd, coalition, coalition building this summer, and our public fall launch. So what's next? Like I said, everyone deserves to be safe at work including sex workers, a population who is overlooked. So what am I asking you to all commit to? I'm asking you to commit to participating in the Red Umbrella campaign in whatever capacity you can give, to endorse our campaign, to join the movement in the fall, and use your voice and reach to change hearts and minds and make sex work safer. We're seeking high-profile influencers and journalists to fuel the movement, we're speaking with global researchers who can endorse the campaign. And we're grateful to have secured two funders already, um, but we are seeking additional investments of $75,000 so that we can cover campaign costs, including my first hire, which would be the incredible undergraduate who designed our branding and he's graduating today and that's why they're not here. We are also looking to expand our brand identity, expand our collateral. We want to contract a PR company um, who can do a much better job of, of spreading the word than we can. And we want to be able to compensate the sex workers for their time when we interview them, as well as Instagram influencers who will be asking to promote this work. And lastly, it's not my forte, but we really would like to bring on board a social media management and evaluation organization so they can see how our messages are being received um, and where there's getting, we're getting traction. So I'd like to ask you to please learn more about our work. I'll be here after we conclude, and I'd love to speak with anyone who'd like to learn more about the Red Umbrella campaign or get involved. And before I conclude, I just want to leave you the words of Savannah, who, like I mentioned, is our board member, and she's a sex worker advocate and a sex worker herself. She told me, when I began sex work at age 18, it became apparent to me that the dangers I faced were perpetuated by criminalization and stigma more than the work itself. The dangers are unnecessary and must be addressed. Thank you.